1776 and power plugs. Well, um, at the University of Applied Sciences, we developed um, a set of disruptive technologies, and these disruptive technologies um, are actually a means to an end. These are the means and these are the end, the sustainable development goals. So um, every time we end one of these lectures by choosing, picking one of these um, technologies and look at how can they be of influence. And this one, last, last month I talked about horse manure and I think about teleportation, which yes. isn't on there. Um, this time I want to start with 1776, um, a remarkable year. Um, and it's the year I normally would play a guessing game, like who knows what happened then. Um, but 1776 is a, is a pretty big year when you look at like American independence, 1776. It's also the year that Adam Smith wrote uh, The World of Nations. It's also the year that Gibbon wrote uh, The uh, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. But it's also the year that James Watt invented the steam engine. So if you have to pick a year to go back into time, this might be a good one, um, because a lot happened. And this sparked an enormous, I go even back further to millennia, and this sparked like an incredible riches in the world. Like GDP growth um, like went through the roof from that moment on. And Basically, uh, we've, we've been poor like for 1,800 years, and then suddenly there was extreme poverty everywhere, like 100%, and then it went through the roof, but not everywhere. Um, we saw that in uh, the talk about like extreme poverty, still 750 million people are living in extreme poverty. The question is, how can we help them? These are also people who are lacking basic uh, access to basic human health care. These are people lacking uh, access to education. And we have solutions for that. We have community health workers who use a, uh, a mobile phone to access the internet and access healthcare systems all around the world. We have, um, and you talked about Coursera, we have edX connecting you to uh, big universities all over the world and being able to let you do a course there. And we saw some maps, and this is a map of edX, of Harvard on edX, and with the registrations for each country. And basically you see here the same pattern um, that we saw in where is extreme poverty. Like where are these uh, classes consumed? Where is higher education, which can be a, a tool to get you out of poverty? Where is that consumed? And you see the most light area, or the same light, uh, it's the same area where people are vulnerable for climate change, where, peop where extreme poverty is the highest. And then I come back to the steam engine. Its power, its eh, first power from the steam engine, and after that, electricity. And this is uh, the share of the population with ex access to electricity. Because you talked about the poverty trap. What is a poverty trap? You're sitting in a room, and you're allowed to uh, exit the room only when you get a degree or when you meet a spouse or when you get um, get your story that you're in, in the room out to a newspaper or um, get a, which one did I then call? Well, one of these things. You have to do one of them. And for that you can use your mobile phone. Huh? You can meet a spouse uh, by using Tinder. You can get a degree by doing a course on the phone. You can get a medical test done. You can call up a journalist, but you cannot do that when you don't have access to electricity. You cannot charge your phone. So the, one of the basic things to escape this poverty trap is access to electricity, and that's why the technology, I think, is one of the ones that can help you escape poverty is renewable energy. And it has lots of nice things because it's also good for climate action and stuff like that. But this is a really powerful one. So if you're trying to look for a startup idea yourself, which you want to make a contribution to no poverty, then look at this technology. If you want to inspire students who are looking for their own business model, then maybe this technology can be really nice to explore. And there are good examples. This is a British company, um, and they developed um, 
a startup that connects you. Um, this device will be in your home, that will be on your roof, the lights will be there, and you get scratch cards, and for one dollar, you can buy the scratch cards, which will act, give you access, will activate um, the device for one month or like two months, depending on the country you live in. Our own Waka Waka, of course, eh? buy one, give one model, uh, providing light in homes where now is uh, petroleum, uh, is a gas and oil fuel lighting. Do you want to inspire students or want to inspire your kids to discover this technology? Lego has a cool thing. Like it's only like 90 euros and you can, um, you can build your own solar power or you can build your own uh, wind powered um, electric uh, Lego toy. So these are great for rapid prototyping and exploring the things. Well, and I'm almost there. Um, we looked at this map before, lack of electricity. And I mentioned 1776. And 1776 was the year of the steam engine, but it was also the year of Adam Smith. And we're right now in the Tropical Institute. And Smith sat in, uh, Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations, and this is, I think, the most misquoted book by politicians out there. In this book, he writes, the discovery of America and the passage to the East, each, uh, East Indies by the Cape of Good Hope are the two greatest and important events recorded in the history of mankind. And he adds to the natives, however, from both the East and West Indies, all the commercial benefits which can have resulted from those events have been sunk and lost in the dreadful misfortunes that they have occasioned. And if you look at this map, a lot of years later, a lot of years later since like the VOC time in the Netherlands, and we still have this map to count for. So if we're looking for new business models, new startups, using solar and wind power to power a generation and uh, power a, a whole continent to gain access to education, healthcare, and all these things, we don't only, it's not only a good business opportunity, but I think uh, in the reasons why we should fight now poverty was mm -hmm. it's also a moral and ethical opportunity, uh, necessity for us to do so. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to leave you with. Thank you.